Tim, welcome along to the podcast. Good to have you with us this week, mate. Good to be here. Now, is this the real Jason or the fake Jason? <laughs> well, this is, yeah, the question I think is, is this the authentic or the inauthentic, given that your column this week is a defense of inauthenticity, which is really intriguing because it seems, Tim, that the mm. the catch cry of our age is authenticity, right? Yeah. That's the thing that we crave yeah. on social media. We don't want these produced videos mm. that are overproduced and and polished and and they shine no they, we, we want, want something the dripping with authenticity with vulnerability with dirt lots um, of camera just, shakes and yeah, you know yeah, yeah dirty edits and things like that yeah, exactly. exactly just just be you bro don't yeah. be anyone else that's right well tease that out for us a bit yeah. Tim, because this is the 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 cry of our age so why defend inauthenticity well first off let, let's talk a bit about um authenticity what um you know, the, the notion of, oh, you, just do you. The, do you. Don't do anyone else. It's as if, you know, crouched uh, beneath the shackles of family, of society, of convention, is this true, pure self yearning to breathe free. Yeah, um, the, 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 know, the golden child inside of a cage yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, the French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau wrote in um, – in the late uh, 18th century, man is born free and everywhere he is in chains. As if there's this, the civilization is, um, is oppressing us. Mm. And so, but also there's, you know, I can understand it. It's a natural, this is the question that's being asked is what is, what is truth? Where does the truth lie? And um, look, you know, the internet is a place that's groaning with fibs. Um, (laughs) And as New Zealanders, we don't like we don't like fakery. Yes, we don't like the sort of airs and graces of the mother country. That's um, that's right. We kind of uh, have the cynicism, that, I think, I, don't we? That everyone's yeah. kind of performing in some way when they are yeah. uh, when they are putting themselves out there. That mm. um, there's this veneer of this is who I really am, but actually underneath there's mm. someone else. They may say that they have your best interests at heart, but they don't really. They're really acting for themselves. And mm. so, yeah, I think it, it's an attempt maybe to get down to that that core of what we what we think yeah. is beneath yeah. these people. Well, what's – and look, I understand that the, the desire for the authentic um, you, the authentic self, is a very natural and, – and it's laudable because mm. – um, because there is, as, as I've determined, you know, there, as I've, I've said, you know, the, the digital world is full of fakes. You hear of deep fakes with AI, et cetera. Um, we've all seen those, those videos. Mm. Um, and most of them, well, most of them at, at present are recognizably fake, but that's, that's going to change. So, um, but this notion of if you do the real you, everything's going to be fine. But so it's what, this pursuit but, that uh, that once we uncover this, everyone will live better lives, and there will yeah. kind of be this harmony. Yeah, yeah. Well, there'll, yeah. Be, there'll be something truer. Yes, and that true, that truer and more natural. Yes, and and that's a that that's a good self. That's the self that we want. Yeah. But but here's my my question is. What if that guy's a dirtbag? Yeah, I was going to say, that's that's a really interesting question that you pose in the column. What yep. if you do this work and you dig this and you let this person out and you say, mm. I'm throwing off these social constructs and these societal yep. expectations or whatever the, the words are, and you you become this person and you realize this this person is a terrible person. <laughs> what, yeah. What do yeah. I do? Well, that's, that's – and there's a, there's, a, there's a theme in literature – that um, we've recently in the Maxim Book Club been reading Fyodor Dostoevsky's Notes from Underground. Mm. And, and his point in that book is that with free will, we, we, we assume, let me just back it up a bit, we assume that, um, a lo- and a lot of policy um, initiatives, et cetera, are based on the assumption that if people have all the right data, they'll make the right choices. Mm. So there's no recognition that people will choose to do the evil thing, the mean thing, the cruel thing, the thing that enriches them at someone else's expense, um, if they can hope they can get away with it, and even if they get a bit caught, they can just crush that person. So if you believe in free will, um, and I think most of us do, then you have to accept that people will freely choose to do evil. Mm. 
Mm. There is this selfish bent. I, I recall earlier and in you're the about year. To confess, are you? I mean, go ahead. <laughs> well, not exactly personal confession, but I recall um, that we were talking about um, on one early episode of the podcast the scan and go when when supermarkets stopped doing that because they they had a nickname for it called scam and go where you would just put all the stuff in your trolley without actually scanning it and then you would just pay for like ten dollars worth of stuff with a trolley full of two hundred dollars worth of stuff and you'd just walk out and yeah. um and because you could the people took advantage of it um so yeah I think most people would go if there's a chance for me to bend the rules if there's a loophole so it's not technically illegal but it might be maybe not the best thing to do then I'll do that. <laughs> and so, so how do we? And, and look, you know, if you if you look into that recent trial of um, Rimuera eye surgeon Philip Polkinghorn, who was accused and acquitted of strangling his wife, but just that sense of um, of people choosing to do the wrong thing, um, but also the notion that uh, you know, outside, you know, you look and you sort of peer over the gates of these Rimuera mansions and it's like, what's life like in there? Well, it's it's this horrible malay in some cases of betrayal, mm. drug use, sexual incontinence, um, misery, the rich and the miserable. Mm. Um, so again, there's that sense of um, that there is a, a true life in there somewhere. But if we look into the true life, you know, the, the life that was detailed in the Polkinghorn case, um, people who had uh, well-educated people, mm. uh, superficially orderly people, mm. uh, their lives were quite chaotic. Mm. Seemingly successful people as well. Yeah. 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 So so success, uh, wealth, uh, notoriety, these things don't necessarily or produce. Status. Yeah. yeah, satisfy or produce mm. the good life um, or an auth- maybe even authentic life to use the, the term of the day. So, well, well my, po- my point is actually that don't be like your supposedly authentic self. Why don't you just try a little bit of inauthenticity? Yes. So, you know, don't – maybe your real self wants to gossip about that person that you work with mm. uh, when you meet your colleagues in the hallway at the office. No, don't, 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 don't indulge that person. Yes. Um, you, may just, you may think, oh, I just want to vote to further my own interests. Well, why don't, why don't you vote for what is actually, in your view – and you, again, this is putting a moral, a moral sort of matrix over it, the mm. good of the country. Mm. Why, why not choose to do something just a little inauthentic? Yeah, something that maybe goes against your own self-interest. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. that's, I it's guess, a, that's uh, part of what... Putting, putting others first. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's you're, part you're, of yeah. what the quest for authenticity is, is what's going to serve me, what's going to make me happy. Mm. And, and maybe actually putting others before yourself might make you happier than you realize. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting that there's this quest for morality, but actually we've, we've kind of well, got there's this. A, there's a quest for authenticity, but it's not mm. necessarily a quest for morality or a quest for... So uh, it's like yeah, they're not the same. The That's right. Yeah. yeah. If you indulge the self more purely, then everything will be good. But perhaps if you question... Um, those urges and and the authentic self it's it's like this um this 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 hydra headed beast it's a mixture of good and bad there are mm. murmurings and mutterings and full throated cries to be i i don't i don't say there's not some good bits in there but yes. if you if you actually try and manage that then you're also getting some agency um over yourself you're not just um you're not just in a sense enslaving yourself to some kind of creation uh, that wants to be entertained so in some way, rather than cha- trading masters, say, let's say, um, because we think maybe social con- constructs or society or culture or whatever it is has imposed this prison on us. So instead we're going to let out our maybe our baser selves and mm. instead enslave ourselves to that. And so you're saying, well, actually there's a third way <laughs> to this, and that is maybe you take control of yourself and have agency and, and take responsibility and yeah and, 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 and direct yourself in the service of others yeah and um, against your own your own whims your own will um yes a kind of self-sacrifice yeah and maybe that's a way to a better society <laughs> don't do you jason 
Because yes. yours isn't working. Yeah. Do someone else. Someone I love better. it. I love it. Someone better. That's a great call uh, to end the podcast with, Tim. Very challenging. Um, A challenge to be inauthentic. Uh, It's lots to think about. And uh, thanks for being with us today. Thanks a lot. See you later. mantra of our age. You do you. Beneath our everyday lives, a deeper, truer self supposedly languishes, longing to break free from the shackles of family, convention or society. The narrative has resonance. Consider the recent revelations from the trial of wealthy eye surgeon Philip Polkinghorne, who was accused and acquitted of strangling his wife. Superficially successful lives of rich, educated Remueraites in fact, concealed a malaise of sexual incontinence, drug use, and betrayal. It's fake versus real, a theme echoed in the digital world, where social media sites like Instagram and LinkedIn celebrate the pursuit of authenticity. We must recognize the technological context to this anxiety. The internet is positively groaning with fibs. Moreover, as New Zealanders, we have a historical distaste for airs and graces. We seek the down-to-earth, yet this preference is neither unique nor new. In 1792, French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau proclaimed, Man is born free and everywhere he is in chains, meaning below all this dreadful civilization, a purer self crouches. In some sense, the search for authenticity shows a desire for truth and meaning, perhaps the most profound of human hungers. You do you honestly, and all will be well. By this definition, authenticity is a kind of self-expression, with little assessment of what self is being expressed. What if this you doesn't work properly? What if the real you is awful? Russian writer Fyodor Dostoevsky in Notes from Underground observes man is a vile creature and perhaps even doomed to be so. We, okay, yep, I, often make bad choices in full knowledge of the trouble being embraced. People commit crimes because they think they'll get richer. They also believe they may not get caught, accept free will, and you must also accept that we will freely choose evil. And yet much of our policy and political discussions are founded on the assumption that if people are given sufficient information, they'll make good life decisions. History and personal experience argues for the opposite. Countries like Ukraine are plundered for their wealth and resources. People are murdered, tyranny multiplies. Such foul consequences are not unintended. Nor does education ameliorate this proclivity. In the recent Sir John Graham lecture presented by Maxim Institute, Professor Nick Aroni unpacked how well-educated people are less likely to change their minds because they have an arsenal of rhetorical and intellectual weapons to bolster their prejudices. In such a landscape, a little inauthenticity might go a long way. Personally, Choose not to gossip about that colleague, even though it might increase your standing amongst the in-crowd at the lunchroom. More widely, you might vote against your own interests, but for the country's good. We may be inauthentic in choosing to reject our true natures, yet we're also exhibiting some agency. No longer are we the prisoners of hydra-headed wants masquerading as needs. So, a little inauthenticity might be good for you. Don't be yourself. Be someone better.